I said you would turn. Uh, I'm going to give you some neuroscience that uh, really speaks to the Veda very closely. I've been working on this for many years. Uh, most neuroscientists think of circuits in the brain, which are like computer circuits. And for the last 70 years, some of us have pointed out that most of what's going on in the brain is not the circuits. The circuits just tell you, they transmit the information from one place to another. The real work that's being done is by fine fibers, dendrites, and teledendrons, which are branches, very fine branches. And the brain is made up of this uh, web of fine branches. And we can study it, and people can study it, but it's not as easy to study as is that better? Yes. That's better. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, it's not as easy to study as uh, nerve impulse, which is a complete depolarization. And people have gotten the Nobel Prize for studying that in uh, uh, sea urchins and, and yeah, big animals. So that the nerves are as big as my finger. These dendrites are very fine fibers, but you can get at it by studying certain things. And, I was alerted to all this in the 1950s. And several of us have been saying this from time to time. And some people sometimes listen. And so most people don't. So there is a way of thinking about the brain which is very different. And what I've come to tell you is that very much what we find is already foreshadowed in the middle. That's the moral of the story. <laughs> now, what I'm going to talk about is a fellow by the name of David Bohm, B O H M, a quantum physicist with whom I worked for about 20 years. And who was a mathematician I still am working with. David Bohm wrote two papers in the early 1960s, in which he made the following statement. If we didn't have telescopes and other devices of this kind, the world would look like a hologram. If we didn't have lenses, the world would look like a hologram. Well, What's a hologram? A friend of mine, uh, Dennis Balbar, wrote a paper published in 1948 in which he said, trying to figure out a way of enhancing electron microscopy, if you, instead of going at it directly, if you did a certain mathematical transformation, you could maybe do a better job. And he called this mathematical transformation holographic, a hologram. So that was 1948. In 19, early 1960s, followed by the name of Leith, Emmett Leith, in, at the University of Indiana, used that mathematical formulation and made it palpable by using laser beams. And Leith, therefore, started to make holograms. Now, you 
we'll see a hologram here if we can make everything work. <laughs> you don't need laser beams, you don't need any other stuff. And Leith says, a lot of paper saying, we don't need laser beams. We never did, but we didn't know it. So these are the steps in the science that, that came along. Yeah. OK, can you? Let's, let's see if we can do it. Uh, you need it. Oh, the other way. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's fine. I may have to do this by myself. And we'll see. Hang in there. You see this image? It's a sort of brain that I operated on. I put the little silver in to produce epileptic seizures in the visual cortex to see if that would bother the animal monkey from doing what it's supposed to do didn't hurt them at all. So anyway, that's... Uh, oh. I can't hear you. So you can't hear me? Yeah, you're here. Okay. okay. All I need is another hand. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yes. 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 Okay. Now we're going to see if we can do it. You all see this slide? Yes. yes. Okay. Hold on. Take off the lens. I'm removing the lens. Oh, okay. He's removing the lens. <laughs> <laughs> I've removed the lens. And now what do you see? Nothing. No thing. No thing. Okay? Sort of a blur. And the mathematical formulation of this is called a, a spread function. So it's called Fourier, Fourier transformation. Now watch. glasses, you see an image. Yes. That means that what was here, which you see as a blur, is everywhere and every when. I'll show it again. Every when. If he had 50 pairs of those glasses, you would see 100 images. I've only got three pairs of glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get the idea. That's like the sun reflecting in the cup. Yeah. Same idea. Yeah. 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 Right? Right? Right. Absolutely. Do you want the portable mic? Do you want the portable mic? Yeah. Which is better for you all? That's better. That's better. better? Yeah. Okay. Well, that is fine. We can have the mics speaking to each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that is a hologram. Yeah. And it is very different because, as I say, the so-called information, the patterns, are spread everywhere and everyone, because there's no time or space. There's no time, no space. Are you with me? Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Now, this is very close to some of the things that Sibosh was talking about, of how the Veda describes things when you get away from language. 
language is very important for social communication, but there's something deeper, and I claim that this is at least one evidence that there is something deeper.